Well, Christmas came a little early for UP high school basketball fans as two Marquette County rivals squared off on the hardwood tonight. The Marquette Redmen played their second game of the season at Nagani against the Miners. First quarter, Nagani's Tyler Jandron looking, looking, driving, scoring, off the window and in, and that tied the game at four. Both point guards showed off their stuff early and often in this one. Marquette's Andy Nyquist from the left elbow hits the jumper, giving the Redmen a 6-4 lead as Redmond head coach Brad Nelson keeps a close eye on the scoreboard. More from the Redmen here, Larry Burnett drives to the hoop. He'd fight through the double team and somehow gets the shot up and in. A nice play there by number 35 in red. Speaking of nice plays, Jandron hits the home run bounce pass on the money to Zane Radloff for the high percentage bucket. Mike O'Donnell's team led 16 to 10 after the first quarter, but Marquette would come back and win the game at 51-40 was your final. The Redmen opened the campaign this year with a 2-0 record on the scoreboard. In a couple of rivalry games, Houghton was 11 better than Hancock, 42-31. Lance wins at Barriga, 64-37. Lakeland and Hubble, behind 20 from Tyler Roos, win at Calumet. Jeffers put up 67 points in their victory over Chassel. Antonagan defeated Dollar Bay, 47-39. Gladiators guard Tony Sumis finished the evening with 24 points, 11 steals, and 10 rebounds. That's a triple-double, folks. Forest Park took care of Rapid River, 77-36. North Central lit up the scoreboard again. This time, 93 points against Cardinado at home. Travis Vincent paced the Jets with 24. Big Bay Danak wins by 10 at Bark River Harris. Mid-Peninsula was 15 better than Republic Michigami, 63-48. And Ironwood defeated Bessemer, 67-56. Adam Mackey scored 25 points and grabbed 16 rebounds for the Red Devils. From boys to girls hoops we go. Westwood entertained Manistique in a mid-pen contest. The Patriots had a 24-10 lead in the third. Manistique with control of the rock. Samantha Williams drives to the bucket and flips it up and in. Back the other way, Katie Rankin in would go to the rim. Her shot was a tad strong, but there to grab the rebound. When put it up and in was Hannah Salmi to increase the Patriots lead to 18. Although they were down double digits most of the second half, the Emeralds didn't give up. Allie Nagy finds her open teammate, Maggie Morrison, and she finds the bottom of the bucket from the far side. Westwood's Caitlin Hewitt would hit a long two here from the top of the key, and the Patriots would go on to win it by a final of 57 to 37. From West Ishpeming to, well, Ishpeming we go next. Dana Fidel's Eskimos played against the Hematites. Third quarter action. Ishpeming with the ball. Around it horn it goes to Morgan Skidda. And she tickles the twine from three-point land to put Ishpeming up by 11. Escanaba got the game back to within a single digit shortly after that. Ashley Cook down low to Sydney Gaffner. And she goes off the window and in. Nicely done. Escanaba down just nine. Ishpeming's defense forced a few turnovers. Tammy Simula steals the ball here. Her shot would be blocked here by Miss Cook, but Kaylee Engler hustled down the court for the easy put back. After an injury sidelined her for most of the first half, Eskimos forward Michelle Lefebvre lit up the scoreboard in the second half. Here she gets her own board in the hoop. Lefebvre scored all 21 of her points in the second half, but it wasn't enough as Ishpeming would survive in double overtime. 62-61 over Escanaba. In other girls' action, Stevenson erased an eight-point halftime deficit to come back and defeat Menominee by 10. Had four players in double figures and a big win over Big Bay to knock. Houghton's Elisa Germou scored 35 points this evening as the Gremlins won at Gwynn by a final of 73-62. Ellie Olson scored 18 points for Gwynn. And Ironwood was a three-point better than Ewan Trout Creek, 40-37. Back to the goods, basketball fans at Marquette were treated to a good one tonight between the Flivers and the Redettes. Third quarter, Marquette up by two. Hannah Trisetter was open for the long two, and you know what she's going to do. She's going to drain it, trying the game at 34. The following possession for the Redettes, Shayla Hubner gets it to Lizzie Kareen for three, and she buries it to put Marquette back up on top by a triple. Speaking of three-point shots, Kingsford's Courtney Qualley from the near wing Give me all three of these. Quali ties the game up just like that. Did I mention already that both teams like to shoot from beyond the arc? In case I forgot, there's another rainbow three. This time from Marquette's Casey Duran. That put the Redettes up by four. A short time later, Hunter Vidla from the same spot as Duran. Vidla gets, well, the same result. 
Vila scored a game-high 24 points as Marquette wins a non-conference -con contest over Kingsford 70, or 63 to 52. In women's college hoops, Finlandia won by a touchdown today at home over Lawrence University 79-72. All five Lady Lions starters scored in double figures. Waters meets Melissa Burke led the Lady Lions with 21 points and 10 rebounds. A double-double for Miss Burke. We switch gears now to hockey as the Marquette Redmen played against the Marquette Electricians at Lakeview. First period, the Redmen on the attack. Luke Schwemmen had a great shot, but Tro's goalie Tanner Kohlberg made the save. On the other end, Kohlberg's counterpart in net, Johnny Beckman, was just as busy. Here come the Tros, and Beckman would make the initial stop, and he would get some help here from his teammates who clear out the puck. No score after one. We head to the second. Luke Schwemmen tracks down the puck for the Redmen, and he gets it to Tony Fredrizzi, and he gets just enough on the shot for the goal. And this game would end tonight, unfortunately, in a 2-2 tie.